Hi, this is a continuation of the uh, video I gave uh, before on deriving michaelis menten equations. Uh, this one I want to take a slightly different um, angle on that derivation that involves the use of a fractional saturation. It turns out that this idea applies to many different situations and it'll be useful to learn how, how to use it. So if you recall, the enzyme Michaelis equation was derived assuming this mechanism uh, where we have free enzyme plus substrate gives enzyme substrate complex which then breaks down into free enzyme and substrate. In the Michaelis-Menten equation we assumed uh, that the enzyme and substrate was in equilibrium with the enzyme substrate complex and in doing so we were able to derive the equation. Uh, these k's, little k's here, are just the first order kinetic rate constants which we won't use uh, in this lecture. So let's pull out just that piece of the mechanism where enzyme plus substrate gives the enzyme substrate complex. Now if it's at equilibrium I can write out the dissociation constant. Uh, so the dis dissociation constant Kd is E times S divided by ES. Note I'm using lowercase letters as I did before to indicate concentration that saves me from using square brackets everywhere. So this is the concentration of free enzyme times the concentration of free substrate divided by the concentration of enzyme substrate complex. It's also true, although we won't be using it here, it's also true that the total amount of enzyme is a free enzyme plus enzyme substrate complex, although we'll come across this in a slightly different form shortly. So here I'm going to introduce the idea of a fractional saturation. The fractional saturation is the fraction of enzyme states that are occupied by substrate. So by state, I'm referring to the enzyme state. And if we look at our little uh, enzyme here, we'll see that it's, there are two states. There's free enzyme and there's enzyme substrate complex. So this is what I mean by states. They're the states of the enzyme. So the fractional saturation is the total concentration of active states. Now the only active state is ES because that's the one that leads to product. Divided by the total concentration of all states. And the total concentration of all state, states is the sum of free enzyme and enzyme substrate complex. So I can write the fractional saturation as the concentration of enzyme substrate complex divided by the total. Now this number ranges from zero to one. When it's zero, all the enzyme is present as free enzyme. And when it's one, all the enzyme is present as enzyme substrate complex and then everything in between. Now recall that the, uh, the dissociation constant, let me just get, the, get it back here, the dissociation constant was this ratio. I'll just rearrange this so I get ES on its own. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna substitute, whenever I find ES, I'm gonna substitute in this uh, expression here. That's what I do here. So this is the fractional saturation again. Uh, this is the relationship uh, with the dissociation constant. So every time I see an ES, I'll swap in this, this expression here, and I end up with this. So this is now a different form for the fractional saturation involving the dissociation constant. Uh, first thing I can do is I can cancel the E's, right? The free enzyme cancels, which is nice. And then I'll multiply top and bottom by KD, that cancels the KD here and here, and we end up with the KD here, and so I end up with this relation. Remember, I canceled the E's, so if I cancel the E, I end up with one here. So when I multiply by KD, I just get KD. So this is now the fractional saturation only in terms of free substrate and the dissociation constant. So effectively, I've got rid of the free enzyme and enzyme substrate complex. Now, as I said before, when the fractional saturation is, is one, it means that all the enzyme is in enzyme substrate complex state. Now we know that it's the enzyme substrate complex that leads to product. So if we've got the maximum amount of enzyme substrate complex, we must be producing the maximum amount of product. Okay. So, so what we can say is that if all the enzyme is in the enzyme substrate state, then the reaction velocity will be maximal. Okay. Now we know that the rate, the rate of product formation is proportional to the enzyme substrate complex, so it must also be proportional to the fractional saturation too. Okay, uh, to get rid of the proportionality, I need to multiply by a scaling factor, and that scaling factor is the maximal rate. So this 
expression here is the michaelis menten expression in terms of the maximal velocity and the dissociation constant and you've, you've seen this before so what we've done here, we've used we've taken a slightly different tack, uh, different approach where we've used this idea of fractional saturation to derive the relationship. Um, so it's quite a general approach, the use of fractional saturations. Uh, it can be used in some very complex situations, which I'll present in, uh, in, in another video. But let's show a simple example where we can use this to derive the rate expression for a competitive inhibitor. Okay. Now let me just introduce uh, competitive, competitive inhibition to you. Uh, so this molecule here, sulfanilamide, is an antibacterial agent that was discovered in 1935. It was pretty much one of the first antibiotics. Um, what's interesting about it, it has a similar structure to uh, P-amino benzoic acid. All right, the only difference is this group here. We've got a carboxylic group here and an amine group here with a sulfur um, atom there. Uh, these are very similar, so similar, in fact, that this molecule here, the sulfonamide, will bind to the same active site as the P-amino benzoic acid. And the enzyme that's involved uh, in binding the P-amino P -amino benzoic acid is an important bacterial enzyme. So if you can inhibit this enzyme, you'll reduce the en uh, bacterial growth and, and that will help um, reduce the infection. So what they they did in 1935, before the Second World War, they used uh, the sulfonamide to as as a antibiotic because it competed with amino benzoic acid for the same active site. So diagrammatically, I would write we could write it like this. So we have the enzyme; it can bind to the substrate, forms the enzyme substrate complex, and that breaks down into product and enzyme. Now, if you have a competitive inhibitor such as this one. The molecule looks almost the same, but it's not quite, but it's similar enough that it can bind with the enzyme. Now, because it's, it's not the same as the original substrate, it results in no reaction. So in effect, the inhibitor is blocking the binding of the natural substrate, and this way it inhibits the enzyme. So what I want to do, I want to write a rate law that, that describes the rate of reaction as a function of substrate and inhibitor. Okay, I'll say that again. I want to derive a, a rate expression that tells me how much product is produced as a function of substrate and inhibitor. So now this diagram here, I can make this a much more concise diagram in this form. It's basically the same diagram. I have free enzyme here that can bind to inhibitor, forming enzyme inhibitor complex. The free enzyme can also bind to substrate, forming the enzyme substrate complex. And the enzyme substrate complex can also, of course, break down into free enzyme and product. Now, KD is, as before, is the dissociation constant for binding of substrate. But I have a new constant, the dissociation constant for the binding of inhibitor, KI. In both cases, I can write the expression for these dissociation constants, as I did before. Uh, the KD is free enzyme times free substrate divided by enzyme substrate complex. And the KI is the free enzyme times free inhibitor divided by the enzyme inhibitor complex. Okay. So the next thing to do is to formulate the fractional saturation. So if we look at this diagram, there is only one active state. So remember now the fractional saturation is the ratio of the active states to all states. And the only active state I have is ES because that's the only thing that breaks down into product. So the numerator will contain the concentration of enzyme substrate complex. The denominator, however, has three terms. It has the enzyme substrate complex, the free enzyme, but now also the enzyme inhibitor complex. So I sum those three up. So the fractional saturation is the enzyme substrate complex divided by the sum of the free states. Okay. Remember, these states refer to enzyme states. And there's only three enzyme states in this, uh, in this little system. So now what I'll do is I'll take the KD and the KI, and I'll eliminate ES and EI respectively. Okay, so I'll take this expression and swap in the KD and KI. This is what I've done here. That's the KD term, the KT term, KD term, and then the KI term looks like this. Um, as before, I can cancel the free enzyme, okay? And lastly, I can multiply top and bottom by KD. That eliminates KD from here, and I can and I and it eliminates KD from here, but I end up with a KD here. 
Uh, I can rearrange that. It's a worthwhile exercise doing. It's simple algebra. I can rearrange this and I end up with this. Okay. So this now incorporates the concentration of substrate, the concentration of inhibitor, and the two constants Kd and Ki. Now, as before, the reaction rate is proportional to the fractional saturation. Therefore, the reaction rate is a scaling factor, the maximal rate, times the fractional saturation term. So those of you who've seen com the competitive inhibition relation before will recognize this. Uh, normally, we, we usually have a Km there instead of a Kd. Uh, it's often derived using the steady state assumption, but you can easily derive it as well using the equilibrium assumption and then invoking the fractional saturation. The reason why fractional saturation is still used is that for some complex mechanisms, especially uh, allosteric and cooperative mechanisms, uh, it's just too hard to do a steady state formulation and the, satura uh, the fractional saturation is a much more practical way of doing it. Okay, see you next lecture.